First of all, there is no such thing as a happy number. It is just a problem statement and we have to solve for it. I am talking about the problem happy number on lead code. Let us see what is it all about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how you can approach this problem and what is the efficient approach so that you can arrive at a solution on time. Going forward, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how this code actually works. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given an integer and you have to determine if that integer is a happy number. If yes, return true, else you need to return a false, right? The first question that should come to your mind is, what exactly is a happy number? In terms of mathematics and arithmetic, there is no such thing as a happy number. But according to this problem statement, a number is called to be happy if you take each digit of this number and square them and add all of them. And you keep on doing that until you get the final answer as 1. If you get a 1, you just stop over there. But if you're not getting a 1, you need to keep on repeating this process. To understand it better, let us look at our two test cases. First of all, let us look at our first test case and the number 82, right? So what do you have to do over here? You take 8 and you square it, then you take 2 and you would square it. So that will give you 64 plus 4 and that equals to 68, correct? This is not yet 1. So what you have to do is take the digits again and square it. So this time you get 6 square plus 8 square and that will give you 36 plus 64 and that will give you 100, right? Now what happens if you square it? You get 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square. So this will change to 1, right? And that is where you have to stop because no matter how many times you square 1, you will still get 1, right? So in this case, 82 is a happy number and you have to return true as your answer, correct? Similarly, let us look at our second test case. That is the integer 2. Now, it is not a case that you have to stop at a single digit. You still have 2, right? So 2 square will be 4. But you don't stop over here since you haven't received a 1. 4 square will be 16, right? Moving on, you have 1 square plus 6 square. That is 1 plus 36 and that will give you 37, correct? Similarly, you will keep on doing this process. 3 square plus 7 square, that is 9 plus 49 and that will give you 58. So this is how you will have to keep on doing this. And for this particular test case, if you keep on doing this again and again, you will never reach a 1. So what you have to do is, in this case, you have to return false as your answer. So now, if the problem statement is clear to you, feel free to try out the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so how do you start to approach this problem? What is the most naive way? Let us say you are given the number 65536 and you have to determine if this is a happy number. What will you do? What you can do is you can start taking each of the digits, then square all of them and then you get the final sum as 131, right? Now you have to repeat this process because you have not encountered a 1, correct? So once you start repeating this, what will happen is you will get 1 square plus 3 square plus 1 square and that will be equal to 11, right? You still cannot stop over here because you haven't got a 1 yet. So you're just going to proceed ahead. This time it will be 1 square plus 1 square and that is 2. And then you will keep on doing this operation until and unless you reach 1, right? And yes, that is the way to approach this problem. But think about it, when you are writing code for this problem, how do you know when you have to stop? It is not necessary that every number will be a happy number, right? So what happens if you keep on doing this? There will be a chance that you might get stuck into a loop and you never reach the number 1, correct? It could also be possible that you receive the same number again and then you are stuck in the same loop trying to achieve 1, 
but you will never get it so what happens then how do you solve for it so let me show you first how you can get stuck in a loop so let us say i am taking another example of the number 61 correct so now when you start to apply your algorithm on this number what will happen is 6 square plus 1 square you get a 37 right next you get 58 similarly you will keep on doing this now look at it what happens when you apply the same algorithm on the number 16 what will happen you will get 1 square plus 6 square that is 1 plus 36 and that will give you 37 again right and if you look closely we already got a 37 in the first place right so if you keep on applying the same algorithm again further to this you will keep on getting the same numbers and you will get stuck in this loop right you will never reach a one so somehow you need to determine that okay this is the place where i have to stop you cannot just decide to stop after let's say two seconds or five seconds hoping that you have achieved your result you need to stop when you have encountered the same number right and that is when you need to take the help of a hash set what a hash set can do is it can determine if you have encountered this number already so if we do our same calculation but this time with the hash set what we can do is we started with 37 right so what you can do is you can put 37 in your hash set next you get the number 58 so put 58 in your hash set then you got a 89 so put that number similarly just keep on adding all the numbers to your hash set now when you encounter the last sum again that is 37 check your hash set if this number is already in the hash set that means you have already calculated for it and you did not get a one so that is where you need to stop and break out of the loop and this should help to achieve your answer in a very efficient manner now if you have understood all of this let us look at the dry run of the code and see how it actually works on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right i have a sample number with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function is happy oh and by the way this complete code and its test cases are also available on my github profile you can find the link in the description below proceeding on with our dry run what we do next we create a hash set that is used integers and this will contain all of the numbers or the integers that we have already encountered right so now what you do is you start a while loop notice that this loop is an infinite loop because we do not know when we will reach our solution so moving on what do we do is we find the sum of squares for the actual number that is n so what will happen is you will find the sum and then if the sum is one right now what is the sum of digits that is 6 square plus 1 square and that is 37 right so what you're going to do is this sum is not one that means you have to continue so you will reach the else part of your loop right since this number is not one this is a new number that we have to work with again correct but at the same time what we can do is we can add this number to our used integers that means we have already encountered it so what we'll simply do is we will add 37 to our used integers now what will happen is this loop will run again and this time we have to work with the number 37 correct so you will square each digit and add them right once you add them this time you will get a 58 correct so once again you check is this one no that means you have to continue but what you will do you will also check have I already calculated things for 58 earlier? No, right? That means this is a new integer. So I will simply add this integer to my used integers, right? So this loop will so this loop will keep on running again and again until you get a unique integer in this hash set. Either you will eventually get a one or you will get one or the other number that already exists in this hash set and then you can 
simply break out of this loop while returning a false. This solution will work in a constant time and space complexity. That is order of one for time and that is order of one for space. Because no matter how big your integer is, even if it is 2 to the power of 31, you will never have the sum of digits that is more than 1000. So you are doing all of your calculations in a limited space that is order of 1000 and that is constant space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know you are thinking how the time complexity of this problem is constant time. Well, if you think about it, if you read the problem statement correctly, the range of integer is between 1 and 2 to the power of 31, right? So that would look like a very big number, correct? But if you look at 2 to the power of 31 and then try to calculate the sum of all the squares of all the digits, even then the maximum sum that you will get will not exceed more than three digits. So the maximum number that you can get is 999. And hence you could have to solve for 999 numbers in the worst case. But then again, that is equivalent to order of 999 and that is constant time, correct? And hence we say that the time complexity of this solution is constant time, right? And space complexity is obviously order of one because you're not taking any extra space. I hope this will help you understand why the space complexity was very, very important in this problem to analyze. What other similar problems did you find? What problems did you face? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. Also tell me, do you want to know more hacker rank problems or more lead code problems? Or do you have any preference of the type of problems that you want me to solve? You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for all your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya!